we're going to build on our meeting that we learned the other day. And we're going to learn about the five number summary and creating a box plot or sometimes what they call a step and leap plot. Step and leap plot out of that five number summary. And you, some of you may be familiar with this, but it's going to go over it again. So a five number summary helps to show how the data values are spread. And I'll explain that in just a minute when we take a look at a box plot here. So first of all, the five number summary, it's made up of five different numbers. Well, the main one is your median, okay? The median is the main one. And the other four numbers are kind of based off that. Well, I guess two of them really are. Two of them are pretty easy to see. So let's just show and take a look and see what all these are. So median, that's right in the middle. Okay, that's why it's the third one. Minimum and maximum, those are pretty straightforward, right? It's just the minimum is the smallest value and the maximum is the largest value. So the median is right in the middle. Well, when I find the median, it breaks it up into two halves. Right here I got a half and then I got my other half of the data right here. And the first quartile is basically the median of the first half of the data. It's really the median or the middle of the first half. And the third quartile would be, what do you think? The median or the middle of the second half of the data. Okay, and we'll see that in just a second when we look at an example. And then what happens is you put dots for all of these on a number line. And depending on where your data is at, it would be how they get lined up. And then there's boxes. These three, the first quartile, the median, and the third quartile make a box. Okay? And there's going to be a line right through the median. And, and through actually through all three of those. So let's take a look at an example. So here we go. I have a box plot of, let's just pretend these are 12 basketball players in the NBA, and this, this is the amount of points they scored in a season. Okay? Well, you should be able to tell the minimum and the maximum. So here's the minimum, the smallest. So it looks like that guy scored about, that's counted by 100. So he, he scored about 150 points somewhere there. And then if we look at our maximum over here, this guy scored, man, a ton, almost like 2,400. So about 23,070, somewhere in there. And then it's kind of harder to see in here, but we have our median right in the middle, and there's a line that goes through it. And then we have our first quartile right here and our third quartile over here. And we have lines that go through them. And then they're connected to make a box. Okay, and so if you looked at our original definition, it says um, this helps show how the data values are spread. And the reason why that is, is so let's think about this. If there's, there's four sections, right? There's this first whisker, there's the little box right here, there's a bigger box, and then there's a long whisker. That's why it's called a box and whisker plot, which, holy buckets, I screwed that way up up top. Not a stem and leaf. We are doing stem and leaves tomorrow. Uh, instead of a box plot, it's also known as a box and whisker plot. My fault there, sorry about that. Okay, so <clears throat> let's break this down now. Since there's four sections, they each contain, each section contains, or each quad, each quartile, I should say, and think about the word quartile, quarters, that's force, right? Each quartile contains the same number of data. Well, in this case, the same amount of players. So as with quartiles, I could break my data, which I have 12 total players, up into four sections, four quartiles. So each Quartile should contain three players' scores. So basically, three of my players fall into that whisker. Three of the players fall into that first box section. Three of the players fall into that box. And three more players fall into that whisker right there. So you can tell not many players scored a lot of points. Look at this whisker. Only three players fall into that giant range. So most of our players score in this range, in our first whisker, in our box area right here. Okay, so it breaks it up into fours. In the same amount of players, 
or the same amount of data is, a, is occurring in each section, right? Each quartile. So that's why we use a five number summary. It helps us describe the data a little bit on how it's spread out. So that box plot I just had is actually from this information right here. So if I was given some information and I want to write the five number summary, what I would have to do is I would have to put all my data in order. Well, the nice part is they did that for me. I have my smallest here going up to my largest, okay? I'm just gonna write them out. All right, so now let's actually find my five number summary. And it might even be good just to write all your things down. So I'm gonna find the minimum. I'm gonna find the first quartile. I can put first Q. I'm gonna find the median. I'm gonna find the third quartile. And I'm gonna find the maximum. Okay, the min and the max should be pretty straightforward. Smallest one, 167. Biggest one, 2357. Remember for the median, you can either start counting off from each end, so like cross off the first one, and then cross off the second one, or on the other end, and then keep working in. Or you can count up how many total players did we have, how many total numbers. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I said 12 in the first one. There's actually 11 here. So if I wanted to find the exact middle, I could cut 11 in half, which is 5.5. .5. So if I went in five numbers on each side, it's actually gonna be right in between them. So if I go one, two, three, four, five from the left, and then five from the right, so one, two, three, four, five. If I take a look, here is the middle. 416 would be my median. Okay, and if the median is perfect, if it's right there, then you don't need to include that 416 when you break it up into your two halves. Okay, since this is perfectly in the middle, that means here is my first half, and here is my second half of numbers. So to find the first quartile, now I just look at just the first half, so these five numbers, and I find the median there. Well, that's nice and easy as well. You can probably see this. It's 288, that's right in the middle. So I write that out, first quartile, 288. If there happened to be two numbers, remember you would just find the average of those two numbers. Same thing with the third quartile, I have a number right in the middle, 841, so that is my third quartile. And then what I would do is, to make my box and whisker, you would just have to decide, how should I start my number line? Well, I can start it at zero. And what's my largest? 2357, so let's go above that, what would be a good number, like a good, like rounded out, estimated number above that? I'd say probably 2,500, okay? And I could maybe count by like 500, that would be a good idea. So I got 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, and then 2,500. And we basically make dots for every single value. So the minimum, I find 167. Well, here's 500, so 167, I just go above it. Somewhere in there, it doesn't have to be perfect. 288, you know, we're going a little bit further, a little bit more than halfway to 500. 416, well these are getting pretty close to the other, so we're about right there. We got 841, now we're jumping up a little bit more, somewhere about there, and then 2357, that's going way over here. There we go, and then like we said, we put lines through the first quartile, the median, and the third quartile. So lines, 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 and then we connect them, make our box, and then we send out our whiskers to the minimum and the maximum. And then here was our, our actual one from the book. Well, what if it asked you for the IQR? What would IQR stand for, you think? Well, Q stands for quartile. R, that's a word we've used so far, range. And I is a little bit different. It's the interquartile range. What do you think it's really asking for? It's really just asking for the range between the two quartiles. So if I look at my two quartiles, we have 288 and 841. It's asking you, what's the range of, of numbers in between there? Well, how do we find range again? Oh yeah, we subtract it. So 841 minus 288 would give me my IQR, the interquartile range. And if I subtract those two, I would get 553, 553. So now what we're gonna do, is let's go ahead and create one of these guys on our calculator. So if you have a graphing calculator, do this with me. 
So I'm going to bust out my graphing calculator. Okay, so what we need to do is, first of all, we need to create this list. Okay, so if we click on stat and go to edit, this is going to how, how you can be able to edit a list. So I actually typed in all of my data so far. So what you'll need to do is, is type in all that data from that table. So Jordan score and then so on and so forth. You're going to have to get all 11 pieces of data. And then once you do that, we need to go into stat plot up here. See how it's in the blue? So I got to hit second and then that button to get into stat plot. And I already have mine on, but yours might not be on. So we're going to go into the first one by clicking enter. So first thing for plot one, let's turn it on. If it's not on, we'll go down to get into the type. Well, if you take a look, here's a scatter plot. Here's a line graph. There's a bar graph right here, box and whisker. So I need to hit enter to get my box and whisker or my uh, box plot. Okay, so that's good. List L1, that's just what we filled out. And frequency one, that's perfect. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see if this shows up on our graph. Graph, not there. Uh-oh, what do we need to do? Okay, sometimes your window's not set up correctly. So I'm gonna click on window. Well, if we take a look, look at our, our line, this our line graph that we made over here. We started from zero and went to 2,500. Would that be our x-axis or our y-axis, you think? Yeah, that's horizontal. That'd be our x-axis. So we need to have the same window for that. So x min, that's where it's starting, minimum. So I started at zero, and then I went to 2,500. So I had to type in 2,500. Enter. And we counted by what? 500s? That's what the x scale means, counted by 500s. The y, let's just leave it for now, see what happens, negative 10 to 10. And I'm going to go to graph. There we go. Got my box plot. Okay. And you're kind of looking at it like, how is this useful? I can't really see anything out there. Well, if you click your trace button here, it'll actually give you all the values. So if you look, it started on the median and it lists median is 416. If I go left, quartile one is 288, right? We found all these values. Go left, minimum 167. Okay. I could go all the way to the other side. Quartile 3, 841. Maximum, 2357. So it actually finds that you can just type your data in and it would calculate your five number summary. Pretty sweet, huh? Okay. So feel free to use that in class if you'd like.